so, so very often. I love watching that kind of playstyle, you know, always good, always fast, always aggressive. We'll see if Rockout do it here again. We'll get into the bands and picks, and it's Renekton and Leona that come out here first of all. Same two pick, uh, sorry, same two bands that were used the last time around for Rockout. On the other side, Rise taken away, and they've taken the Thresh. Finally, they take the Thresh away from Vanda. And Rocket is going to, oh, Band away as well. I'm about to say, they're going to first pick Jax, if not Band away. So, SK actually decides to uh, ban away the Fresh, ban away the Jax, the two key, key key champions here for both Zazos and Vanda, of course. So, I like the, the change in the bands. Don't ban away Trundle, is kind of a pointless ban. But it does mean, however, first pick Nidalee now, that is left open once again, and Rocket. Just like we saw with the last champs, like saying, if you pick Jax, we take Nidalee. This time around, if you ban Jax, fine, we just grab the Nidalee. On the other side, SK Gaming taking Trundle here very quickly. Elise being hovered over. Svenskeren, of course, played his fair share of Elise. In fact, their last game of the regular season, 3-2-14 against Millennium. He finished on that one, but switches over to Eve, which has actually been his go-to champion in recent weeks. Yeah, again, as we talked about, the early game pressure you can do, as long as you don't lose your red buff at level 1, do not flash the hook at level 1, and then in the very first fight down the bottom lane, lose it. Because uh, Svenskern, he fell so far behind early on, he actually ended up going 0 and 7 in the game because he, he, he was so weak after losing the first few fights, after losing the early game so hard to Yankers and Rockets. So this time around, he of course needs to make sure this doesn't happen again, weird enough. So Rocker seems to be quite happy with what they've got so far. Quick lock-ins there on Lucian for Selva and Lulu as well for, I want to say for Vanda there, because we've got that Nidalee in, but there's never, we should never count out Zazas in the top lane we've number one before. with Lulu, or, I don't, don't want to really say Nidalee to go top lane, that doesn't make that much sense, but we'll still see a uh, possible switch away from the top or support role there for Lulu on the other side. Is Fizz going to come out? Velkos support, we've seen it already. And Rater did that in the game, which in the end didn't count against Gambit. We weren't impressed. Too low on the mobility front. Yeah, very uh, risky pick. I mean, yes, you can bring out quite some damage, but you don't have any mobility. So if you get caught by a stun or something, or by a, a hook, of course, now banned away. But still, if you get caught by something, some CC, you're a very easy target to kill. So Ari and Twitch. Twitch picked up here for Candy Panda, another champion that he played against Millennium in the final game of the regular season. Went 9-2-7 with that one, had a fantastic game. Ari at this point as well, fairly safe pick up against what he's expecting. Yeah, he's expecting to go against the Nidalee. Yeah. You want to try and do the same thing Overpower did in the last game. Of course, it was an Akali, this now is an Ari. So Assassin, you want to try and bully out the Nidalee. You want to try and get a kill, force her out of at least XP range or CS range in this lane in the laning phase and trying to abuse the fact that Nidalee is fairly weak in the early game and also that you can roam around the map as well. You can shove out the wave and then you can start making plays with your jungler on, he on Ari here. So that's obviously the case for SK. They want to try and do the same as Rocket and with Twitch also being logged in, it gives uh, late game wise or team fight wise a lot of damage and also with both Evelyn and Twitch logged in, you can roam around the map in stealth, try and find someone out of position. Gonna see Kale taken away by Rockout. We are obviously uh, Enrated playing that in the last game, and Gambit played both uh, matches uh, with that Kale against them as well. But Kazix for Jankos in the jungle that's a scary champion. If he gets going like he did on Elise, he's gonna be even worse in terms of snowballing. Of course, I mean, and this also shows the Elise pick for Rocket was not the key thing because it was open, they could have picked it, but decided to go with the Kazix here. So, team fight wise, when you have Kale, Kha'Zix, Lulu. It's a very tangy Kha'Zix who's gonna jump in your face. It's very hard to kill him, but if you actually look at the lineup here from Rocket, we still don't know exactly who's gonna go where. Is it gonna be mm -hmm. Kale mid, and then Nidalee top lane is gonna be Nidalee mid lane, Kale top lane, Kale support, or Lulu's ball. We're gonna see how they swap around here, but I expect it to be Sasu's top lane on Lulu, Nidalee mid for overpower, and then of course uh, with the Kale support actually. Sona support here was the final pickup by SK Gaming. Sona we've been seeing less and less and less of as the, as the season really rocks along. What's your opinion of Sona right now? Well, actually what I like about the, the Sona pick here is if it's Lulu support or if it's Kale support, she's going to do well against both. She's going to out-trade them and she's also going to out-sustain them both. So in a 2v2, 
if they get this 2v2 deck, Sona is going to be so strong compared to these supports early on and will be able to give a lot of farm and a lot of pressure on, or give a lot of farm to Candy Panda and the kill potential at level 6 when you have Twitch and Zona. If you combine the ultimate from Twitch and of course the ultimate from Zona, you have so much instant damage, so much CC as well. So very scary combo from... Uh, from uh, SK here, if they or uh, once they get to level six mark, and if they get rolling here as well, we saw Svenskrun on Evelyn. Uh, Svenskrun on Evelyn in the last game, we've seen him on it so many times this season, and uh, always putting up good numbers. But more importantly, the numbers always been able to get the rest of his team really rolling. And he tried his best in that last game, came down to that bottom lane. But as you said, you start to fall behind a little bit. It quickly turns into a position where. Actually, if a counter gank scenario happens, you've got no chance to live through it. No, and Svensgren and Enraided are going to be the engage here against this uh, very mobile comp uh, composition from uh, from Rocket side. Of course, Nidalee going to try and land the spears. You have movement speed buffs on Kha'Zix with his own ultimate. You got it on Lulu, you got it on to Vanda and Kale support here. So a lot of mobility coming in from Rocket. Well, we're going to find out if SK can turn this one around. We're into game number two of the semi-final. And this is a possible last game of this best of three as well. If Rocket take this, they'll pick up that 2-0. Pretty much ace the playoffs, at least to the grand final stage, after beating Gambit 2-0 yesterday as well. And of course, it's Fnatic that's waiting in the final for either of these teams later on. Last game at level one, let's not forget, we saw Rocket doing a three-man late invade to Red Buff, which got Svenska and killed. And also, of course, gave the Red Buff over and a big advantage early on to Rocket and especially Yankers on Elise, who really used it then to snowball from there on. And if you look at SK's side here, they actually picked up double Ignite. So they're respecting the heal coming out of Nidalee, the heal coming out of, of course, of the Kale, and also the heal onto Celevar as a summoner here. So they want to make sure that once they actually catch out a target, they're going to kill you. They want to just burst you down instantly, make sure the heals does not go through and, and heal you back up. Like we actually saw with Fnatic against the Lions when they used this uh, very shield and heal comp. And thinking back to the Challenger series playoffs uh, just last week as well, the annoyance that you have of that niddly Kale, the heals coming out, and then the summoning so heals yep. on top of that as well. Very, very difficult to burst through, especially when there's a Lulu top lane as well, the, to throw that wild growth in there. Let's see, though, how far this one goes along. SK Gaming is stacking three men. Uh, make that four. Svenskren is there as well on the top side of the map. Jankos will actually spot, spot them coming around here if that does, in fact, happen. And this is definitely a lane swap Rocket is happy with because Kale, as we talked about in the last game, Fairly weak in the early game against the Zona, who's going to poke us so much. Also with Ignite, the kill potential for Candy Panda and Enraided together here. It's going to be very scary. So lane swapping for Rocket side means they can get some levels onto Vander here. Once he gets level 6, he can actually stop the whole burst coming in from Zona and Twitch if he times his ultimate correctly. We are going to see a buff steal here early on. And that, of course, was SK Gaming. Are they going to go for an early dive here onto Lulu? A level 1, level 2, still going to be extremely risky for them. Doesn't look that way. Take Candy Panda freezing that lane out in the middle. We see that Jankos, after knowing that his blue buff was gone, heading over to the SK Gaming blue buff. We'll smite that away to keep it safe. So it's going to be a simple trade of the buffs here. And while, again, for the bottom lanes, it's fine for Rocket with the lane swap, Lulu, of course, is going to have some issues over in the top lane, trying to farm. And she won't be the lane bully we normally see her be, because she won't get this 1v1 from the start where she can do a lot of damage onto Trundle every time he tries to get some CS. So she won't get this because of the lane swap, and Trundle should be able to pick up more farm in a 1v2 and be more safe, be more tanky at least, than the Lulu pick. At the same time, though, it's going to leave Selva and Vander in the bottom lane to pretty much free push that one because Freddy is doing the jungle route here as well, trying to get himself as much XP and farm as he possibly can. And we may just see them teaming up here and doing the whole tower push strategy here at these early levels. Yeah, they can do a four-man push. It seems, though, for now, Vander has actually stopped his recall, so he decided not to recall. And they're actually moving two members towards this mid lane here, so they want to do a gank onto Jesse's. This could be very, very dangerous for him. There's the exhaust going down. The jump in from Jankos. Can he get this low? Off? Actually, he's going to flash in there. Gets a they save. Yeah, Jezus here is going to fall very, very low. I don't see him being able to escape it. Already used his flash. And there is the damage coming out. It's Jankos that gets the kill again for a second game in a row here to take first blood. So they decide once again to 
try and just get an early kill onto Jesus, gets him to fall behind, like we saw in the last game here. They lost the turret already. They're not even pushing down the bottom lane. They're just waiting around. They don't even care about losing this turret up here. Selim and Van are actually keeping this lane frozen, so no faster push there on towards that bottom turret. SK have already taken the outer turret in that top lane, and they're going to move in here, possibly. Well, they can see Candy Panda when he stops under the turret here, but he just wanted to engage. Oh, flashing in for it there. It's Svenskun that gets that kill. Freddy coming around the side, and Jankos surely going to fall. This is four men going in onto him. It will be a double kill for Svenskun. Now Vanda moving around. Teleport coming in as well. They're low, but it'll still be a 4v2. They can't fight that one. They've kept the turret alive, but losing two men. Yeah, losing two members. Definitely a big mistake. They stayed around the turret, even though there was the chance of them getting dove by SK Gaming here. So. Very good move by SK, and now with the turret here and down the bottom lane where Selva is just freezing the lane, he's not even gonna hit the turret. They actually trade first ball onto Jesus now for turret and two kills for SK Gaming. So definitely worth it due to the fact they can get those two easy free kills, I would actually call them. Much better start this time around for SK, that's for sure. And as we hit the five minute mark, they've already got a 1300 gold lead. Well, Rocket. By the time they start getting those towers of their own, and that will start to level itself up a little bit. Jezus here just going for a bit of a wonder, getting that ward down by the Wraith camp of Rockat. Jankos is actually on the top side of the map right now. So it looks like we're going to see the duos heading back together here in this bottom side of the map as Jezus putting some good damage down onto Overpout. And in the end, it's Vanda that comes around to give him that heal. Again, double heal there in that mid lane. That's annoying for Jezus. Yeah, but we have to question the idea for Rocket to say, we're going to give you a free turret and we're going to take first blood. I mean, SK's side, it was definitely worth it for them. Also, oh. with the kills to pick up, and now Vanda is in trouble. That is a face check and the flash. Not going to get him far enough away from this one. Svenskren is going to pick up the kill. He does get that one to put him on a killing spree now. 3-0-0. Almost the entire opposite yeah. of what happened in the first game. Completely different start here for SK Gaming. They're doing everything right in this early game, and now Jango's in trouble. Oh, he's going to have to jump away from that one. A lot of damage coming out. Svenskun doesn't want to go underneath that tower, though. And that will mean that Jankos lives, but it also means that Selva is on this outer turret here with three men starting to close in onto him. Rockat need to get someone there to help. Vander is coming along after face checking and dying earlier on. And actually, SK Gaming start to uh, just freeze this lane out a little bit more. Not pushing too aggressively. Svenskun already leaving. So with Selva getting all this uh, free farm and free XP down the bottom lane, he's going to be level 6 fairly soon at least. And he's going to have an XP advantage against Candy Panda, but he's going to be behind in gold simply due to some of the the, the tower gold that Candy Panda got and the assist from uh, the two kills they picked up. Oh, we're going to see them push in for anything down this bottom lane. And Raider just trying to keep them away. Selva down to half HP. And there is a pause. So, a little bit of thinking time for him. Seems to be something wrong with Jankos. We have the admins there. We'll be making sure that all gets sorted here quickly. And certainly a, a player that you want to have on finest form. We saw how good he was in game number one. The start not quite working out for him. I mean, he did pick up that first blood, but after that, kills kind of slipping away from Rocket. Again, the whole idea behind we want to get the first blood in mid lane and we don't care about pushing. Our, our dual lane doesn't even push the wave up to the turret, so they can take it. There's two members. They decide to actually freeze the bottom lane and just try and deny Freddy all the CS. And then meanwhile, they just give up the turret in top. So the whole decision made the... Even though he picked up the first bot, they still fell behind, and now SK Gaming just been taking control of the map, and with some good moves, especially the one where they actually killed Vander, trying to come down to the bottom lane, they just extended the lead a little bit. So Jankos seems to be getting back into the game, so we'll be able to restart this one here in just a couple of moments. We're 6 minutes 50 into it, and a 2,000 gold lead for SK Gaming. Very much the start that they were looking forward to. Whatever they talked about in between game 1 and 2 seems to have paid off for them. Yeah, and we also, again, going all the way back to champ select, banning out the, the fresh, of course, for Vander and making sure there's no jacks in the game either. Very smart decision, and we need to see if Rocket can actually adapt to this now. Well, SK start to pile those minions up against the Rocket turret, and Vander just helping out Selva here to make sure he can pick up that farm as he goes. 55 to 38 CS, and that's simply because Selva had that extra time down there in that bottom lane. He's hit level 6 here, going to throw out the Cullin straight away. A lot of damage coming to Enrated, but, well, the Cullin at level 6 with no items in there, not really doing masses of damage. Looking at the pings from SK and also the wards, Triple Ward in the jungle of Rocket so early on, they got full vision of 
anything Jankus is doing, and that's why Svenskan feels confident, just moving straight in here, going for the red buff whenever it actually spawns, and with this vision control, if SK moves in with the duel and if they push it all the way up here, force Vanda or Silva to back, they can just walk in with Svenskan and find easy picks. Red buff from Rocket side actually spawns really late because Rock, uh, uh, Jankos had to move from his blue to the enemy blue and Very then true. all the way back Very to true. red. So Svenskan's not going to get anything there for a while. Blue buff being done. Svenskan's actually coming down towards his bottom lane. It's going to be a three versus two. Vanda being ripped to pieces and Silva, he's going to fall to the same. It's a double kill for Enraged on Sona. So while he didn't get a red buff, he still got to walk all the way down and just dive onto Rocket's dual lane here in the bottom lane. So again, the free from onto Stellar has done absolutely nothing. The very strong movements here from SK, not being afraid to dive onto Rocket, really paying off. And they may get themselves a turret here as Jezus waiting over the wall from Overpower decides not to go in. They've got Vision of Jankos. This could actually be really, really dangerous for Rockat as the spears come flying through. And Rated at half HP, they're going to pull out this red buff. And Svenskren tries to steal that one away, bringing it all the way around the back. And Svenskren will smite that one off. He's getting himself another buff. So that's two buffs stolen overall in this game for SK. And they are now 3,000 gold in the lead. So. Slowly but surely that gold lead getting bigger in their favor. So just like Rocket in the last game, when they got hit early on, they kept going, they kept putting on the pressure. SK Gaming is doing the exact same thing in this game. Whenever they see a chance of getting some kills, getting a red buff, whatever, get the, the Wraith camp away from, from Rocket, they go in there and they take it, making sure they don't give Rocket any chance of a comeback. So far, game similar to the first one in terms of uh, the amount of kills that we've seen, but completely the opposite direction. SK Gaming turning this one around. And that's always great to see that, you know, sometimes teams in a best of three, they'll lose the first game incredibly heavily like that, and they'll just cripple themselves and, you know, almost roll over without a fighting game too. SK Gaming obviously not going to go that way and are doing very, very well here. Need to pick up this win and bring us level, otherwise they will be getting knocked down. And Alice now could be in trouble. Is he Svenskren stealthing in for this one? Should be pretty obvious. Freddy going to go towards him. Wild Growth will be used here by Zazas. And actually, he's turning around the damage. Svenskren going to start to fall low from that one. Not quite low enough to really be in danger, but he could be now as overpower headed to the top, but turning around. Freddy was completely oom, so he oh, out of mana. So he couldn't join in for the fight here. He couldn't even put up his pillar, I believe. So Zazas was just pop his own ultimate, turn around, get some good damage onto Svenskren here, forcing him to go back to base. So at least now, Rocket, they know where Svenskren is, they know there's no pressure on him, at least for the next 30 seconds. 30 seconds, but down in the bottom, both duo lanes are uh, headed up against one another, and Candy Panda with a BF sword now on top of his vamp scepter will take down turret number two here for SK Gaming. And now it's 4,000 gold. Every time I look, there's an extra 1,000 piled on top here in favor of SK. Selva's still ahead in CS, actually, from that bottom lane. If you look in the mid lane, it's Jezus that's got a 20 CS lead over Overpower. Get into that point where you have to start fearing the R because one charm is going to be possibly not 100% at this stage of things, but certainly a lot of damage that will force you out of lane. SK Gaming, complete vision control on this bottom side of the map, going to take themselves a dragon. Nothing that Rocket can do. And uh, Rocket needed to gank this bottom lane if they wanted to give their own dual lane a chance to do anything because the issue with Zona was Zona was always the fact that you're so immobile. I mean, you're so easy to gank. There's nothing if Pandrak went to drop down in your face or uh, Kha'Zix jumps onto you, there's nothing you can do. And whoa, Freddy flashing the wall here. Sansus decides to back off. Nothing happens from it. Just forcing away the flash and the ultimate. But still, this Zona pick here. As long as Enredis is left with Candy Panda to 2v2 against Selavar and Vander, there's nothing they can do. Sona is very, very strong in these 2v2s. She needs to be ganked. She needs to be shot down by Yankas coming down and setting something up and just kill her. And level 6 now, which means the crescendo is available Even for Enrated, and that's going to mean a little bit of trouble as the charm just been sidestepped by Overpower. They didn't quite have the damage to finish off that final outer turret. Both top and bottom lane already been taken, and Svenskren now going to come into the jungle. Jankos is here. Can he do enough damage to him? Half HP stripped away there. There's the ultimate prop from Jankos to try and get him out. Spear will land onto Svenskren. They're going to try and turn this one around. That was a good ultimate to get the group slow off, and Svenskren can walk out. So he walks out here again. Used the ultimate, used the flash. Just like Freddy up in the top lane, just a few, uh, like half a minute ago. So Rocket doing a very good job now, going very aggressive onto Candy Panda. Oh, Candy Panda though gets into stealth. Sullivan going to wait for that one, and this is going to be outplayed. Oh, fail flash. Candy Panda uh, goes down. So again, actually, Rocket managed to force away 
both summoners from another member from SK, so they're doing a very good job finding the right targets, finding the picks here, and making sure SK Gaming, even though they're so far ahead, actually need, need to use summoners to either escape or flash into the wall. So it's been coming back onto the top side of his map, and that's a rock out just sitting back from that one. That's a welcome kill for them. Zavis is now 1-1-0 one, one, with that blasting one double door and ring on the other side. Trundle with his Vamp Scepter also got himself a Spectre's Cowl in there. So a bit of protection, a bit of sustain and more damage. But SK at this point can just take four members in the mid lane and just start pushing down the turret. If Rocket tries to engage, you got the Sonal Ultimate and the Spray and Pray with a Bloodthirster uh, Twitch who's just gonna completely destroy you. So even though this auto turret now is gone, they can actually push on for the next one with these four members because they are so strong. They do decide, however, to actually send Candy Panda down to the bottom lane because he's a little bit behind in farm. They want to make sure he can get the farm here early on and they don't actually feel they need to push just yet. Farm him up and he's got five assists at this point. He's probably wishing that he's got had at least of, uh, a couple of kills in there to his name, but still doing very, very well. And with these couple of ways, we'll be catching right back up in the farm. We'll have a look down some of the other items. A big one there for Nidalee, DFG. He's going to be picked up there as we get another pause. Looks like it's Vanda this time around. So DFG is the first item. Simply means whenever we actually get a team fight or if we get a pick, Jesse is just going to do so much burst damage. If he lands the charms, combine that with the DFG, you have so much extra damage you put onto them and he can just blow someone up because he's so far ahead also. Farming really well here in the mid lane. So all of a sudden now SK Gaming completely opposite of the last game. If they now find the right team fight or find a pick, they will just blow them up like Rocket did in the last game to them. Interested to see what the targets will be here for Jezus with Intervention and Wild Growth can both go on a single target or onto different targets there. So Jezus really gonna have to pick his targets or pick his battles very, very wisely as to who he goes for. Yeah, that can be the downside about picking this uh, DFG so early because of course, with the single target defensive stuff on Rocket side, he can actually completely destroy his use of DFG. Uh, but I actually believe it's more so for general just trying to pick up people or pick a pick a target. Mm. Not in a team fight, but if they find someone in the jungle, if they find Yankers, if they find overpower overextending or something, go towards them and get the kill. Not exactly for the team fight itself. Well, we are going to be getting Vander back into the game here shortly and we'll be able to start things back off. Of course, he is a decent lead here. 5,000 gold, in fact, for SK Gaming. And we are 13 minutes, 40 seconds into it as Overpower spotted here by Enrated, who's trying to harass him away from picking up that ward kill. Didn't quite work out the way that he expected. So, and what I'm interested in now is Rockat. Once they got ahead in that last game, they got some good deep wards down. They moved around the map really quickly and never gave SK the chance to come back. I'm interested to see whether SK could do a similar thing as Selva face check straight into the brush there. Ultimate was, was it used? No, it was on nope. cooldown actually. Uh, but that will come up if Selva decides he wants to go back into it. Actually, Svenskren here could be in some danger. Gonna get slowed down by Jankos. That's a lot of target damage as we see the ultimate being thrown through. And there's a shutdown. Candy Panda running the prey and spray. And he's gonna go down as well. Jankos here burning. And he's popped oh, his ultimate. Oh, it's damage. just enough damage to get the kill. So, SK Gaming now are trying to just split out on the map and just split push in all the lanes here. Jess is in the mid lane, Fredo in the top lane, and then with Candy Panda in the bottom lane. And then you have this uh, stealth Evelyn just roaming around the lanes trying to find targets. This time we actually backfired for them because Yankas, he was nearby, and because Selvar as well with his good dash, he actually got away from Svenskan at first, and then he could turn around when Svenskan decided to stay, just wanted to peek a little bit more. Rocket Engine, a bit of gold back in their favor. Let's see if uh, they can keep that train running. Freddy, by the way, he's doing a fantastic job of farming up right now. 107 to 83 CS. That's a nice lead that he's got himself over Zazas. Is this turret, will it get pushed down there? Yet to pick up a turret kill here. And if you look through those outer turrets, all of them are still pretty healthy. They've not really done much in terms of pushing down those objectives. No, I mean, that's what happens when you fall so far behind. And Yang is now going very aggressive top. We have to slow down a good pillar from Freddy that will stop Lulu chasing in. Did use the subjugate, which stopped the further chase around. Now it's Jezus. Is he going to go for overpower? He's landed the charm. He is going to throw everything at him. You've got a DFG. I'm not sure why he's not using it. Well, still, with the exhaust from overpower, he would be able to survive it. So good use of exhaust from overpower. Of course, with two of them on a the team, Jezus and 
can depend in the team fights when he's using his spray and pray. I'm gonna be the target here to shut him down now. Yang is again going oh, in. Oh, and he's gonna fall surely with both Overpower and Yankos moving in there. There is the kill. Freddy comes around. Svenskern is there as well. Rocker aren't gonna know that until he's right on top of him. Freddy down to half HP. There's the intervention. And here comes the rest of Rocker. Have they got the damage? They've got the exhaust on Svenskern. He's just dodged away there from the slow of those void spikes. In the end, SK don't lose anyone else. Couldn't pick up any kills. And oh. now in Rates are moving in. Celebo putting down a good ultimate. Svenskren so incredibly low. Nidley moving from the side. It's a four-man slow. Wild Growth will knock them all up. Spray and Prey come from the back. The crescendo as well. The spear doesn't finish off Ben Rayton. And in the end, so, so very low on both sides of things. It's SK that get the kill. In the end, they actually end up trading one for one here, but SK Gaming, they were so far ahead and they decided we're just going to con continue to split push. We want to force Rocket then in some bad fights, but instead it's Rocket all the time actually winning out. Yangus is the guy moving between the lanes, picking up kills left and right here for Rocket so they actually get some kills, get back in the game. They are still far behind. That We need to say it, of course, they are still far behind. And SK, clearly though, don't feel confident enough to actually go down and, and start sieging a turret. Also because of the fact with Twitch, it can be a little bit risky because you, you again, you're very immobile. When you, when you hit the turret, it's very scary. And wow, spear onto Jesse. A lot of damage onto Vanda though, and actually uses DFG this time. Selva coming in from the side, spears flashing through as well. Jankos dives into the middle, but again, they don't feel like they've got the damage as that spear was wide of its target, but they want Dragon here. This is another big chunk of gold in the right direction for Rocket. If they can finish it off, SKR kind of hovering around. Let's go put some ward in, but it's going to be too late to get in there. Good Dragon pickup for Rocket. Yeah, with Candy Pen up in the top lane, Rocket, even though Vanna was um, very low on HP, still went in for this one. Of course, remember the ultimate of kill, because no mana, so you could still use the ultimate and then just try and back out of the fight. But yeah, with Candy Panda again split pushing away from the rest of the team, Rocket picks up a dragon. Salva, is he gonna get the first turret of the game for Rockat? Actually, they need to be careful that they don't lose this inner turret in the top lane. There are three men there for SK Gaming. I think that four now as Sona comes around and Rockat do get their first tower of the game down on that bottom side. Zazas trying to slow everyone down. Vanda and Jankos and Overpower now moving in. Can they actually close them off here? Who will be the target for them as the spear comes through? Lands onto Enrated. That's surely the signal to go, go, go for this one. Selva is actually pushing the inner turret. He's gonna take that one down. The entire team of SK are here. They could either fight 5v4 or try and recall. But S uh, Rocket are doing such a great job here of actually stopping them from recalling. How are they going to get back in time? They've lost the inner turret. Selva's finally turned around. Brilliant play from Rocket. Rocket is honestly outplaying SK Gaming on the map. They take the dragon and then SK say to themselves, we need to go top lane now because Candy Pan is pushing a big wave. We need this turret. So they move all five members all the way to the top lane. But they forget about the fact that Rocket was at the Dragon and it was just so easy for Celebrate to just step down to the bottom lane and just start pushing up and nobody was there to actually defend. Sizes though, taking a lot of damage. Taking a lot of damage for Super Flash, used this wild growth on himself there in the end. Not enough damage from Candy Panda to secure himself that kill. So let's take a look at the gold again. It's down to just 2,000. Rocket certainly going in the right direction or SK going in the wrong direction, you could maybe argue. Yeah, I will definitely say Good job by Rocket, coming back into this game, but it's also SK Gaming not exactly knowing what to do on the map. When they had the chances to uh, find, uh, find a good fight, they went over aggressive or didn't actually do anything. When they had the chance to just go down and find a pick and then take a turret, they didn't do it. And now when they actually wanted to take a turret, they went to the all the way to the opposite side, opposite side of the map while Rocket was just standing with one member in the bottom lane and taking two turrets. So SK need to just clear their mind now and actually think what do we want to do with this comp? Do we want to continue to split push and try and find targets with Evelyn and maybe Candy Panda roaming around? Or do we actually want to start grouping up and try and team fight because we still feel we are far ahead? It's surely with the composition they've got, it's got to be team fight. It's got to well, be pile it in can be both. Crescendo. If they, if I mean, if Rockat start to push them back onto the towers with Overpower now starting to get stronger and stronger, that's not a position you want to be in defending against those Nidalee Spears. No, again, so with the DFG and the Jesses, it was clear you want to find picks. He doesn't want to go straight for a team fight because the intervention, because the Lulu ultimate can counter away this DFG. So it showed at least we want to find picks. And that's the comp is very good for this from SK's side, of course. With double stealth, with Trundle split pushing, nobody can actually one v one him at the moment. He can just push out the wave and then back off. And with teleport, he can always join in. So split pushing is definitely an option for them. 
They just need to make sure whenever Jankos actually comes in to fight, that they don't die to him, because that's been the issue again. He joins into the fight and they just they be, they're being caught out of position by Jankos. Got himself up to 3-2-1 now. You see that Candy Planner again off on his own. And we mentioned that a little bit earlier on. He was behind in CS, he remains behind in CS and quite the distance as well. 206 to 170 CS. Selva certainly doing a great job on that front. The gold does still remain at about 2,000 the difference in favor of SK Gaming. They've had pretty much the dream start to this one, aside from that first blood, of course, that went Jankos' way. Everything else went probably better than planned, considering everything that happened in game number one. But Rocket not letting go of this game just yet. They want to win this one in two like they did against Gambit yesterday. What we need to remember, though, SK Gaming just need one kill in one of these side lanes and they can push it all the way down to a turret and all the other lanes can start pushing all the way down to another turret. So while they've been losing for the last few minutes, they still have a very good chance of just finding a kill in this split push with Svenskan once again staying around where Candy Panda is to see if something happens, get the kill and turn around. So they still got very good chances. If Rocka go alone here. Well, Vanda is kind of proving me right or wrong on that one as he throws out that ward, but they've been sticking generally at least in a pack of two. You can see they've got that pink ward on the top side to make sure that they've got full vision control of that area. Both Jezus and Enrater just pushing this middle wave up once again. You look down some of the items here. The Rabadon's Death Cap now added in on top of the Athene's Unholy Grail for Overpower. And we can see that the Lich Bane almost finished there for Zazus as well. And Overpower got really past the point where Nidalee is weak. Of course, he got to the death cap point now. He's wave clear. As long as he jumps into cat form, he's now also very strong. If he can actually get into the minions without SK going towards him. So the whole point where the SK could have used the fact that Nidalee wave clear is very weak is now somewhat gone. And also with the fact that Celeva is joining in with him, they can just clear together. Candy Panda here waiting around the side though. He will be able to get through. Stealthing up there. Just to clear out that ward. Void Spikes will stop any advancement. Only 30 seconds until the next dragon of the game comes up. Svenskern has already scouted that one out here. He's scouting for more ward takedown. So, two invisible champions headed towards the dragon area. Not easy for Rockout to really weed out. A few things to look for in the fight. First of all, the DFG from Jesus. Will he use it on a target where Bander managed to put the intervention on so it removes all the damage here? And also, we need to look for the combination with Invade and his ultimate and then Spray and Pray from Candy Panda. If he can stand in the backs of the fight, ultimate landing down from Invade, he can hit multiple people. SK Gaming will destroy Rocket in the fight. So let's see how they can play these key champions and key things in the fight for SK's side. And of course, Rocket needs to be very careful they don't get caught by a Sona Stone. Dragon is up. Rocket and SK have three men in the middle. They're just holding on to position in there. Trundle, of course, did take down that turret in the top lane, the inner turret. But now Freddy might find himself in a little bit of bother. He's going to throw down the pillar. Overpower basically right on top of him there. Freddy using the flash. There's the knockup from the wild growth as well. And whilst Freddy trying to put some damage back here, he's only going to buy some time for his team down by the dragon, which they do take. Uh, take, take, take. take. That's the word I'm looking for. Thank you very much to Vicio. They take the dragon, losing the kill for it. So Rocket actually decided to give up the dragon, just picking up a kill because they didn't feel like they can actually fight in this position. They don't feel like their their comp is strong enough to fight against this again with Twitch and Zona together. It's such a strong comp from SK Gaming. So give up the dragon and said just pick up a kill. They look at the gold lead. Three and a half thousand SK have brought it back to. So swinging a little bit on that front and just of course I'm talking about it. The turret in the top lane does go down. So that's all outer turrets now done. Uh, I know that's a lie because middle's still standing. Three of them have gone. You know what I'm talking about. Still though, Celebor pushing up here, getting good damage on the Svenskan and a few hits onto the turret. Lucian, of course, very good just coming up. Get a few hits with his passive with the double auto attack and then backing away from the turret. Slowly grinding them down here. Rocket side though, what it actually decided to do in this mid game point now of coming in towards the late game because it is so scary for them to actually group up against all this damage from SK's side. And if someone gets caught by a charm, for instance, it's the go time for SK Gaming. So a bit scary for Rocket to actually do the side and group up here. So we need to see what, it, what, what they're gonna do. Well, currently they're gonna go home and spend a little bit of that gold that they've been farming up so nicely. Almost a random zone and 
is done there for Jankos. So he's going to be feeling a lot more confident about jumping in there and trying to uh, finish off these kills. And now he gets a little bit tanky. Zaza's returning back to his top lane still. About 30 CS behind that of Freddy, but he's got that Lich Bane now done, along with a Blasting One as well, which means he's going to be doing a bit more damage, not necessarily to Freddy, because he is already pretty damn strong, although Ravenous Hydra, so not as tanky as he could be at this stage. It's a very scary in this split push, and oh, they're actually jumping onto him. They're going to go on towards Freddy. We'll see if that Ravenous Hydra is going to cause him problems as Candy Pinder actually puts down this spray and pray, but he's got the damage reduction of that exhaust as Jankos flashes into Baron Pit. That was nicely done there for him while he was in stealth mode. In the end, nobody died. What a great use of spray and pray here for Candy Pinder. Actually, three members from Rocket, Rocket were lined up here, so he hit every single one on, on, on every single hit. So they needed to back away, and Candy Panda now on Twitch, he will scale into late game, into the team fights, and become very, very scary. He does, in fact, have the uh, Phantom Dancer on top of his Bloodthirst year. Another couple of items coming out as well for Jezus Void Staff done along with a Blasting One. So he's going to have a bit more damage about him if he finds anyone. If a charm lands, and I have to also add in there, and, and Kale's not there. Yep. <laughs> Then that person is going to go down. We'll see about that one. It's Candy Panda going to ambush Selva. Has he got the damage to finish him off? He does now. Actually, his teammate comes Whoa, in. Selva gets good. the kill, though. Two versus one. Selva takes one with it. So they actually trade one for one here, but we see the power of Twitch and Evelyn together when they stealth in here, trying to find a target when they're just standing there and farming. So they did get a pick, but Candy Panda went down with it. So beautiful play by Selva. 3,000 gold still. Is that lead that SK are uh, holding? And interesting to see that that's not really getting any bigger for them, that they've not really been able to force any objectives for quite a while now. And I'm a little bit surprised there's no players doing King on to uh, Candy Panda. We often see there's an early item when you want to do these split push, you want to do these ganks with Twitch. Because, of course, it makes you a lot stronger 1v1. You would actually have been able to survive the last fight with a player doing King. So a little bit surprised when we at least see the rest of SK build towards split pushing and catching out targets. Well, he's got a last whisper now, put in there. It's better for team fights, of course. Very strong for team fights, yeah. We'll see if they can get to that point. Rocket certainly don't want a team fight at this stage. They've made that one very, very clear here. Not really grouping up, not really daring to push. We've got a dragon coming up in two minutes. Last one went over to SK Gaming. We'll see if uh, we can do it here again. Or did it go to Rocket? Went to Rocket. It went to SK because Rocket SK, went up yeah. in top lane and That's kills us because yeah. he didn't want to fight against SK. So. Went to SK and just staying around this mid lane. Both Jesus and Enraider have been in this mid lane for a long time, just clearing away, making sure if something happens, they can always rotate very fast towards the side lanes, of course, with the speed buff from Zona and uh, all the jumps from Jesus. He can actually get down to the bottom lane or the top lane very, very fast if something should happen. So, a question we've seen this almost if you look at the minimap, this could have happened, this could have been the scenario 10 minutes ago. Yeah. What are they waiting for here from either side? Well, SK is waiting to do actually what they did before without Candy Panda dying. Had he killed Selivar with uh, Svenska, now Freddy taking some damage here, Sasa's actually going to back off. But had he killed Selivar with uh, Svenska, they would have pushed up the bottom lane. Then the mid lane would have been pushed down by Jesus and Enraider. Then the top lane would have been pushed down by Freddy and they could apply pressure and get a turret in one of the lanes because Rocket would have to rotate around to defend the bottom lane. And that's basically what they're waiting for. And Rocket, they're just in a position where they don't feel they can actually team fight against SK because they are behind. So they're just waiting for SK to actually make a mistake and then hope they can get a kill like they've been doing earlier in this game. It's a battle of nerves. Who's going to make the first mistake from this one? Dragon, an area where certainly mistakes can and have been made in the past. That's coming up in 30 seconds time here. SK already in prime position for that one. Don't believe Rockat are even going to challenge for it. Definitely not in a position to do it yet. Yenge is just doing the blue buff, very far away. Lulu is returning up to the top lane. Yes, of course, there's Teleport, he can join in, but where's he gonna Teleport to? There's no watch, no vision, so... Free Dragon again from SK. Rocket really showing they don't want a team fight at all. They don't want anything fight, actually. Nope. Team and it's scary because, again, Twitch late game, very, very strong. Tron late game is such a mega tank, taking some tanky stats away from Yankos, for instance. So while he got the 50% damage reduction, they're gonna be squishier and making Freddy even stronger. Of course, you can say Rocket in the late game are just looking to poke and then kite away and then land a few spears and whenever someone drops low, they can actually go in and just instant kill them with Yankos jumping in, get the, get the kills. So, but in their case, 
They don't mind waiting because they don't feel they can do anything else. Baz is just drawing a couple of men towards his top lane. He, by the way, has now that death cap in there with the Lich Bane. So you have to watch out for him. Can't leave him alone in that lane too long. Otherwise, he is going to be taking away towers. Uh, but he was, again, just a little bit scared of hanging around there too long and getting caught out. Because as you mentioned before, that's exactly what SK Games yeah. are looking for to and get this game rolling. Also, Rocket, they know that SK don't want to just siege up because of Twitch, where it's very hard to get, actually get in to hit the turrets. Due to, again, once you're standing there hitting the turrets, and if they engage onto you, you're not going to get out. So they know SK is looking for this pick, and as long as they don't give up a free kill, they feel they can just continue farming. It's just a matter of time, though, before SK decides to push up the lanes and actually go towards the Baron, ward it up, and force Rocket to team fight. Or should be a matter of time. <laughs> I was waiting for that little uh, disclaimer there at the end. Uh, well, again, Rocket pushing up. Keep a hold of that vision on Baron as well. That's the, the important thing for me because that's, as you said, the area where SK can really start to force their hands somewhat and say, you have to come out. Otherwise, we could be doing that Baron from right under your nose. And Rated, as you'd expect, with that in mind, he's clearing out wards wherever he can. They've got three sweeper lenses at the moment, so I should be able to do a good job of that one. But credit to Rockat, they're still holding good vision over by the Baron pit. Well, again, SK is not exactly doing anything to clear around this Baron here, so there's no pink wards for them. Only been in there once. I don't even think they used the sweeping lens, just backed out again. So, for now, Rocket keeping the vision and they actually decide to group here in the, this mid lane, trying to land down some good poke. I think it's dangerous. If this Nidalee Spear plus, you know, Lucian ability and then two auto attacks actually land, we saw there. That's a lot of damage. It's a lot of damage, and that might be the signal for Rocket at least briefly to start pushing out a little bit. Get some damage off onto uh, those turrets. The middle turret, of course, is the only outer turret left remaining in this game for SK. Bottom lane's already had the inner turret taken away thanks to Selva's counter push a little bit earlier on in the matchup. And Rocket now, if they've had a change in mind, I think. They start to push up past the halfway point. Look here what the difference is. Two pink wards in the side bushes of the mid lane. So they can actually spot Svenska or Candy Pen if they try to sneak around them here. And uh, of course, one of the engage options for SK is Svenska coming around, planning his ultimate, and then Freddy teleporting in, starting the whole fight. So the land is slow, and then Enrede can flash and stun them, and boom. Spray and Prey is going to go mental. Candy Panda, though, is going to show himself in the top lane. And look at that. Rockout just dives straight in. The Cully comes through. Last bullet actually catching Enrated. This is the tower going down. Freddy's pushing bottom, but he's not going to be able. Oh, he is, is he going to take the tower? Yes, got he it. did take that one. But Zazas actually yeah, going to stop him here. There is a teleport where oh, his own Wild Grove on himself to stop the teleport coming in. He was like. I'm gonna win him. Oh, wait a minute. I can't actually do anything about it right now. Sven's gonna, gonna get jumped on. Don't think there's a kill there, though. Jankos decides to back away. So, as you just said, the second they spot Candy Pan open in top lane, they start moving to the turret, land the poke, and actually get a kill and a turret. It's a good play by Rocket. Zazas and Freddy gonna have a bit of a fight. That Ravenous Hydra is gonna do ridiculous damage to Zazas. Look at that. He goes low, but he's just spotted that Selva's coming around as well and decides, I should probably get out of here. Can't fight the two of them. Freddy stays alive. So, have a look at the goal. Surprise, surprise. 3,000. Been that way for quite a while. Well, with the mid turret gone, at least for Rocket, they can push a bit further up. But it does also mean for them they actually need to get the pink wards moved up and notch into the jungle of uh, of SK if they want to push for the next turret. Because again, they want to avoid being flanked around by Svenska and then teleport coming in from Freddy to start the whole thing. So they need to take the pink wards they had before, move them a bit further up if they want to start pushing up and actually try and land some poke. So, and Gunner again. Gonna show himself on this top side of the map. That'll make them feel a little bit more comfortable about knowing exactly where the rat is. We just see uh, Jankos get himself a ward down there as well, which SK won't hesitate to try and take away. We've seen a couple of different items coming out now. Svenska got a thorn mail. Also, the random internal was finished off by Freddy. I think the front line from SK Gaming is very, very tanky. If they get onto Silva, it's going to be hard for him to kill them. And at the same time, Twitch should be fairly safe in the back line because it's actually only Yangas who can jump in towards him and with, you know, can't even with the protection from Sona with the ultimate, of course, with Jesus being around him also to help out, it's going to be hard for Rocket to actually kill him. So he should feel fairly safe to do all the damage and it's another advantage for SK in the team fight. I saw Candy Panda have dealt with him thanks to overpower in there. Actually, no wards there for SK Gaming. That's slightly worrying from their side, but 
will spot Vander moving around the side. Svenskren just waiting here. And then Rayton takes away the wall. That's not the position you want to be in. And there, Jezus can jump that wall and be straight in your face before you know it. And now, SK moving forward. They want to gain that vision control back here over the Baron Pit. And they spot out Svenskren. Trying to move in there. The rest of Rocket team is actually coming across. And they need to try and force Sazos to teleport in here because there's no teleport in Freddy, so he had to join the team and try and set something up. Otherwise, Sazos is going to push all the way up to the turret. Good damage actually coming out there. And again, SK fell prey to this one. This is how they lost their inner turret before. They were held in position by Rocket, who chased them and stopped them from recalling. This time around, though, Candy Panda was able to get into his jungle and he's going to retreat to keep that inhibitor tower safe. And their Baron potential for Rocket, the damage is not amazing onto Baron here, but they're starting it anyway because Candy Panda was in the bottom lane, but they should actually, they should abandon this one when the rest of SK joins in. Yes, I think a bot mission is <laughs> something that's going to be called for this one. Svenskren thinking about going in there possibly. Jankos actually stepping forward, spots out Svenskren, so they've got vision of the Evelyn. That's a time where you may want to think of moving in, but they don't see Candy Panda. He's not actually there, but they don't know that. And the only engage from Rocket would be Yankers popping his ultimate, jumping into the face of SK and then popping the Wild Grove from uh, Sasos onto him so he can knock a few members off. It's not ideal engage, that's why they need to start the Baron to force SK to actually do something. Well, they have started off one He's again. calling on it. Colin is going to go in. That's a lot of damage, but look at Freddy. He's going to try and stop them, but I tell you what, he needs to get away. Forced to use a flash. They've taken out Overpower. Zazus is dead as well. A strange fight and spray and pray comes over. There's Jezus catching the charm onto Jankos. He's got his ultimate running now. We'll have to flash over the back of that blue wall. And Rockat disastrously split up in that fight, lose two men. So, you have a worst team fight combo, or uh, combination. Combination. You have a worst team by composition and you're behind and then you start the Baron when the entire SK team is around and then you split up as well so you couldn't even intervention on anyone of their first targets SK went for so very easy Baron and uh, I would actually say very easy team fight for SK they just Rocket didn't exactly know what to do. Well, we'll see what SK actually do with this one. We're going to have a look at that fight again. Yeah. So look here. Everyone going straight for yeah. it. Yeah, Overpower is here, all by himself, by the way. The rest of Rocket is up here in the top. Sazus tries to join in, only to die, and now Yankos died too. People are just dying everywhere. Dying, and speaking of dying, Selva might find himself falling here as well. Intervention's just about to come off of cooldown. Doesn't need to use it in the end, though. Selva is flash instead to get back to the safety of his teammate. So that leaves us at 11 8, that dragon. We didn't quite spot, but he did go over to SK Gaming. Yeah, Dragon and another kill here, and it means they can just start pushing down. Freddy, teleport, is in the top lane, he can always join in. Push down two lanes here, and Rocket, well, they technically need to engage onto SK, but they don't have any engage, so it's going to be fairly easy for SK to just push down these turrets. Well, that's the first. We'll see how many with this Baron all. Six to four, they lead in turret kills right now, and they Start to move in, nearly trying to snipe him from the side there. That seems to be enough for uh, Rockat to force SK to back away, but that may just be a lane change right now. Freddy pushing down the top, and no, SK are actually going to recall. I imagine they've got a lot of gold amount of gold to spend here after that. Yeah, wow, 3,800 gold for Candy Panda. Yeah, so that's why they didn't actually want to continue pushing because picked up the won the team fight, picked up the Baron, then the Dragon, so they collected a lot of gold now. Guardian Angel picked up and a B of Sword more, uh, more for for Candy Panda now. So <laughs> his damage is just insane. That's, that's quite a good set of items in there. Banshee's Veil, Sona, Zonya's Hourglass Ferrari, Guardian Angel for Candy Panda on Twitch, as you mentioned, with a BF sword as well added in there extra. So not the ideal scenario for Rockat. They still are behind you. It's getting closer to a 10,000 gold lead. 11-8 in kills, 6-4 in turrets. SK Gaming with that Baron buff on. They've taken down one tower here, but they don't seem to be in any rush of going for any more. They don't have to, as we talked about so many times. Like the team fight potential of this team going into late game as well is just—it's fantastic. So they don't need to rush down for anything. There's now they're so far ahead. All of a sudden, they're now almost 10k gold ahead again. Like the okay, they were never 10k gold ahead, but they were far ahead early on, and now they got the lead again and can start pushing up. And there's no one really to defend this one. Celeva is going to try and push them back from this. 
of that Banshee's Veil on, but we can see the turret's falling far too fast. Freddy's a tanky beast. You don't want to fight Svenska, and he's got himself that four mail on and a Guardian Angel now as well. And that will be turret number seven, the first in him turret to go down in this game so far. And with this inhibitor turret gone, they can obviously push in here and they can force Rocket to either back away from inhibitor or try and go in for the fight. So let's see. Look for Yangos to try and stealth up and jump into the face of them with the ultimate from Sasus if they want to engage. Big spear on to Candy Panda, but he's got a Guardian Angel and he's got a lifesteal by Panda goes down. Didn't use his intervention. That could be the end of the game here if Candy Panda and SK play this one right. Jezus trying to get in on towards Yankos. In him's going down. I don't see a reason why SK really need to turn around from this one. Candy Panda's just going to be able to lifesteal himself back up. Spray and Prey doing good damage there. Uses that expunge as well and you see his health just rising massively every second and look at that bottom lane perfect timing a massive wave of minions coming in to help them finish off the inhibitor and van is still dead for 25 seconds they're still ultimate onto enraid it's still ultimate onto freddy and sventure and so they can easily fight this one in case rocket tries something so going into it then that's where it focused by candy panda freddy bites also doing masses of damage to those buildings as well you can see that they don't last very long whatsoever so two inhibitors down now in favor of sk gaming they're going to turn and burn though that top lane is pushed all the way back to the halfway point but again they've just taken down so much they're going to have another ton of gold to spend 1200 on three people in the team that means more items when they come back for the third and final inhib then they can just go straight towards the, towards this top lane here. They can even put Freddy in a different lane to push up with the super minions going in towards the Nexus turret. He can always join them with teleport. Or they can say, we don't even need to do this anymore. We can just go five members and push down here. And Rocket's response, try and land a spear in our, in our face and then try and engage. But we are so much stronger at this point. Seems like banning Fresh and Jax has worked out quite nicely for SK Gaming here. And, well, again, and we have to, we have to look at the uh, we have to look at the champions from Rocket here. They, they're picking a composition with absolutely no engage, and also weak in team fights. So they made it very hard for themselves once they actually fell behind early on. Oh, and they might be falling further behind. Candy Panda chasing them towards overpower. There's Svenskren, who's going to chase straight on through. And he's Henrater that's actually going to be looking for the kill. No, nope, Svenskren got it in the end there. That puts them 13-8 up on kills. 60 seconds spawn time for overpower. They lose the massive damage that they can comes from all the way in. Yeah, this is, they can finish the game right here. At least they can try to. The minions in the, in the mid lane and the bottom lane is a bit far away though. They need some time before they join in with the base. So they don't have any minions, but they're still going for this turret. Getting towards Selva. That's a good calling coming out from him though. Doing good damage on towards Svenska and wild growth used onto Jankos there. That was not, I think, what they really wanted to do. I thought they Thought he was going to jump straight in there or be close and knock people up in the end. That didn't happen. Still 30 seconds as well until Overpower respawns. They're just waiting for all that minion wave to actually come down. I think Freddy could probably just tank it up at this stage though. He could just tank it up. Just playing it safe though, actually waiting for the minions to come here. Can the minions well. Now they're going. Candy Panda going to go low, but there's a crescendo coming across from them. It's Sullivan. That's a focus there at the front. Sven's going to finish him off. And this is just a whitewash of kills coming through. Vanda tries to get back to Fountain. Manages it as well. They didn't even pop Sven's Guardian Angel. Candy Panda didn't have his taken down either. And there's super minions all over the base right now. They focus straight down to those Nexus turrets. There's going to be a last chance saloon here for Rockat to defend. They won't manage it. SK Gaming bring it back 1-1. One, one. Very, very strong performance and some very good champions picked up here. They fixed the issues they had in the champ select from game one. They banned away the Jax, banned away the Thresh here and it was a lot easier for them to play in the early game at least also for SK. Jax and Thresh, which we saw yesterday in those games against Gambit. Both games. I have to wonder if SK would be in 